Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another Plenty video. I hope that y'all are doing so well. I have been doing quite well over here myself. I've been very busy trying to get the house set up and kind of get back into the groove of everything. And I kind of fell off track with filming. I'm sorry that my videos have been more spread out than usual, but that's going to, that's going to end soon because like I said, I'm getting back on track and I'm going to hopefully be more consistent with my uploads in the coming weeks. So thank you for your patience. I thought I would turn on the camera and take you along with me today as I just putter around and get some things done. I have some planty tasks to do. We're gonna go out, check out my herb garden. I know I have watering to do outside. I also have watering to do inside and perhaps some other random planty tasks. And then a big goal of mine for today was just to get my bedroom set up a little bit more because it's just, it's not set up at all. And it's kind of driving me crazy at this point. I'm not gonna be getting it totally set up today, but I just want to get it to the point where it's feeling just a little bit more cozy than it is right now because I have hardly done anything in there. Like it's just, it's very much a work in progress, but I just want to dip my toe into that project today so I can feel just a little bit more settled in there. Other than that, I'm just going to kind of see where the afternoon takes us. Like I said, I wanted to head outside and check on. I just have like a small little patio, balcony, garden, container garden situation happening. So let's pop out there so that I can water those guys. These are my herb planters. I have chives, parsley, and dill in this one. And these are really nice because they just hang on the railing of my patio or deck and they've been doing really well. This second one has thyme, cilantro, and rosemary. So delicious. I love growing fresh herbs so much. And of course I have some kale as well. I have two of these large planters with a few different varieties of kale growing in them and those are doing quite well. Also, kale is one of my all-time favorite foods, honestly. I love kale salad, so I'm always growing that. And then here's my basil, which is always kind of struggling and I'm not sure why I struggle with basil so much. Um, but my mint right here is doing super well. It always grows very vigorously. And this is always catching my eye every time I come out here lately, this giant Hoya obovada leaf. I cannot believe how massive this thing is. It's making me want to move all of my Hoya outside, honestly, because it's just so beautiful. And just showing you some of the other houseplants that I have out here, my begonias, cactus, euphorbia. I have this whole planter full of more cactus and succulents. And my stapelia even has a bloom coming in, which is going to be one of the beautiful starfish blooms. So that's very exciting. And now we're just filling up my blender so that we can go out and do some watering. Watering out here is one of my favorite things to do. It's so relaxing and peaceful. I'm so grateful to have an outdoor space now. I love spending time out here. Um, sometimes I bring the hose up and water that way, but I don't mind doing it with the blender. It takes a little bit longer, but like I said, it's an enjoyable experience for me. And there's not a ton to water out here, so it's not too labor intensive. This is a south facing covered deck. So most of it doesn't get a ton of sun, which is why these uh, planters that hang on the railing are really helpful to me for plants that do need a lot of sun pretty much all day, like my herbs. I also have a staghorn fern out here, which was thirsty as you can see, so I'm just watering that. It actually hangs off of the vinyl siding. I have a little hook. I'm gonna do a whole video um, about my patio and the plants I'm growing out there and how I have it set up. So keep your eye out for that if you're interested. It should be coming out within the next couple of weeks. Okay, the herbs and kale are all watered, so that's great. There's a lot of mosquitoes here where we live and they were attacking me out there. Look where one got me. Ugh, it's so annoying. Anyways, 
Glad that that's done because those really needed to be watered today. It's been a little bit cool lately. So some of the plants, the house plants that I've put out there have not been enjoying that, but we're getting warmer weather again. So that's good news. Now I have to keep up with my watering. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all what the bedroom is looking like right now. It is not good. It is not good, my friends. This looks like a sad space to me. Just a hot mess happening. Really zero effort has been put into this room so far and it's driving me a little bit crazy. Like what is going on? What is going on here? <laughs> There's also hardly any plants in here. There's my one asparagus fern chilling over there, which actually looks really cute. Thank goodness for that plant. She is holding this room together. And then there's a few other plants that are just kind of sitting here in front of the window because I wasn't sure where I was gonna put them and they needed a little bit of light. So yeah, I think that we are going to be addressing these plants later in the video because they need to be watered and I need to find better spots for them. My favorite thing about this room is definitely that it goes out to the patio. Like, how nice is that? I'm super, super grateful for that. But that is the only window in this room, so in the future, I will definitely be putting grow lights up in here. Okay, we are moving on indoors so that I can start working on putting the bedroom together a little bit. And I've received one of the most motivating packages to get me to work on the bedroom and make it just a little bit more cute and cozy. And that is a new bed set from Brooklinen, my favorite bedding company. So thank you so much to Brooklinen for sponsoring today's video. I cannot wait to show y'all my new bed set. I'm gonna open this bad boy up and then throw it all in the wash so that we can put it on my bed. Okay, everything is out of the dryer and all ready to go. I cannot wait to throw this on my bed. If there's one thing that I've learned in my 31 years, it's that it's absolutely worth it to invest in high quality and cozy bedding, which is why I get so excited to partner with Brooklinen because their products truly make me so happy and really elevate my home. If you're not familiar with Brooklinen, they create high quality home goods. They have bedding, obviously, and then they also have bath items. So things like towels and robes, which I would really like to get my hands on sometime soon as well. I got my first bed set from Brooklyn in last winter and it absolutely exceeded my expectations. I love it so much. So I can't wait to get some new summery colors on my bed because I love my other set, but I'm excited to put it away for the summer and then bust it out in the fall. I think that that's gonna feel really good. I love just switching up my space like that a little bit. I am a cozy queen for sure. I love being comfortable. And one of my favorite things to do is read in my bed. That's probably my favorite part of the day where I just get to before bedtime, get all clean and cozy and crawl into my bed with a nice book and a cup of tea. I honestly, I love that so much. Nothing can beat it. Brooklyn and Sheets have been a total game changer for creating that cozy space for me. And they also keep me nice and cool. They're very like crisp feeling, which I love. They get softer with every wash. So they just keep getting better and better. And their website has over 100,000 five-star reviews. So I'm not the only person who thinks that these are incredible. Like I said, you can create a bundle, which is what I do. So you get a duvet cover, a core sheet set, and then you also get two extra pillowcases. You save 25% when you do the bundle, so it just kind of makes the most sense. This new set that I picked is actually from Brooklinen's new organic bedding line. So this is made from GOTS certified organic cotton, meaning the materials are grown organically and they also meet environmental and socially responsible standards. As of editing this, I've been sleeping in this new organic bed set for a few days now and I've been loving it. It is so perfect for summer. It's been keeping me very cool at night. I've honestly been sleeping amazingly and I love knowing that all of the materials are organic and that it's a more eco-conscious product. If you yourself are wanting to stock up on bedding or bath essentials, right now is the perfect time because Brooklinen is actually running their summer sale until July 5th. If you click the link down below in my description box, you will get 20% off of all Brooklinen items. 
I truly couldn't recommend them enough. If y'all decide to try them out, let me know your thoughts because yeah, I'm obsessed. Okay, if this bed set doesn't scream summer, I don't know what does. I'm so happy with it. I feel like it brightens the room so much. And even though all I've done is just put a new bed set, I feel like it's looking so much better in here already. So loving that. Olive's already made herself at home on there as well. I don't have a bed frame yet. There is one that I'm thinking of getting. I just haven't gotten it yet, but it's gonna look even better once I have a nice bed frame. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the nightstands. They're just these old mismatched ones that we're kicking around. It's just gonna be like that for now, but you know, eventually this room will get more put together. It isn't the brightest room. It only has this one window, which is the patio door. It's really nice because it's a huge, it's a really big sliding door. So it does let light in, but I don't really get direct light in here because the deck outside is covered. So maybe in the winter, maybe in the fall winter, when the sun's a little bit lower, I'll get a little bit of light in here. But for now, it's just indirect light which brings me to the plants. So there's a, a few plants in here. Those ones we're gonna address right away, but I also have my asparagus fern here looking cute as ever. Of course, it's still in its spot of being beside my, um, beside my bed on my little nightstand. New house, same spot for the plant. However, I think I am gonna switch out the pot just because I feel like this pink matched really perfectly with my last bed set. But now it really doesn't go that well, so I feel like I wanna switch it out to maybe a terracotta or something like that. So I'm gonna go see what I have. Okay, I took it out of its pot. I think I found a cover pot that's gonna look pretty cool, but I realized that this needs a drink. So I'm gonna go water it because it's pretty darn dry. I don't think I've watered this since I moved and it's been three weeks now, so it's definitely thirsty. Okay, so the pot that I'm thinking of going with is this round black one. It's mostly matte and then it has a kind of shiny part at the bottom. I got this the other day just from Home Depot and I don't know, it just caught my eye. I thought it was kind of different. I originally envisioned a trailing plant in it, like up on a shelf somewhere, but I think it could look really cool with this plant. So I'm gonna give that a go. Pop them in there and then I'm gonna put his grow light back in. Oh, that actually looks so cool. Okay, that looks so much better. I love that. In fact, it suits this plant perfectly. Like, that looks so good. Let me know what y'all think, but I'm super, super happy with this. It's already such a different vibe in this room from my old bedroom. It's just, I don't know, it's really different, but I like it. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing around with different colors and different kind of looks. Yeah, in my opinion, this matches so much better than the pink one did. I felt like the pink was clashing just a little bit too much, but this is looking really cute. One of the easiest plants in my whole collection as well, the asparagus fern, which isn't a true fern, my friends. It's in the asparagus family, so don't be intimidated by it if you are scared of ferns. Ferns are a lot harder than this plant. It's just called the asparagus fern as a common name for it because it has like fluffy little fronds. Okay, the rest of the room is still a hot mess, but we're gonna slowly make some progress and even just these small changes already have me feeling so much better. So like I said, I want to tackle these plants over here. I've just kind of stuck a few of them here. This is kind of just a little neglect corner, but not a corner, the corner's over there. A little neglect spot for plants right now that I just didn't know where to put. So I have this bin of plants that I need to go through and water. These have been in this bin since before I even moved. And the other day I just took the lid off of it so that it could kind of air out and start acclimating to room humidity. Although I see that my Dark Lord got way too thirsty. So that's unfortunate, but I do have cuttings of this plant that are healthy right now. So I can always just um, start a new one. Anyways, yeah, we have some plants in there that I need to go through, so we're gonna do that. Also, some other neglected plants here. 
Peperomia, ZZ Raven, my Gloriosum, which I think I'm going to chop completely up because my other one that I propagated is not doing so hot and I don't think it's gonna make it. So I think I'm just gonna end up like growing a new Gloriosum from either cuttings or a wet stick. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it yet, but that's probably what's gonna happen with that, that plant. I'm thinking of putting the ZZ Raven over there. It's not a super bright spot, so I don't know if I should do it. I don't know if I should do it. I know ZZ Ravens. I know ZZ plants are marketed as low light plants, but even though it could survive there, I know it might not thrive and do the best that it can. This is my partner's plant, by the way, if y'all are wondering why I just suddenly have this full pot of ZZ Raven because mine is just one stalk that's been like that for several years. But yeah, this is his plant, so I think I might just put it there on his side of the bed. Or maybe I could just put it like in this little area, then it'll still be by the window. I'll have to figure that out, but I know that it needs water because these plants have not been watered since I moved, so let's bring them to the sink and give them a good drink and kind of a look over as well. Okay, so here is the bin of thirsty plants. Like I said, I have hardly even looked in here in the past probably six to eight weeks. I know that they're all very thirsty though, so let's take them out. We have a Monstera subpanata. If y'all remember, I cut up this plant a long time ago now, probably like six months ago, and I have a few different plants from that, so this is one of them. Looking a little sad, but we do have a new leaf that's trying to come out right there. Oh my goodness. The Monstera dubia grew so much in there. It's going a little wild now. Look at him. I think this is trying to climb up the side of the bin. Yeah. This really needs a plank or a moss pole or something to grow up. It's looking crazy. It's still just in sphagnum moss as well, which is pretty much bone dry. So need to give that some water ASAP. Another Monstera subpanata. This one has a whole new growth point that's come out with a little baby leaf and another leaf on the way. Look. Okay, my camera rudely died, but I was just admiring the cute new little leaf that's coming out on that one. And then we have, I think this looks the worst out of the whole bin, a very sad combo pot of Philodendron Silver Sword and Philodendron Dark Lord. Somehow the Silver Sword is putting out new leaves and those still look really good. So this will probably perk up a little bit, but we're probably gonna have some permanent leaf damage. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Wow, look at the aerial roots though. Oh my gosh, because that bin was closed for several weeks, the humidity was so high, the aerial roots just went wild in here. Crazy. I believe that this one is Philodendron Mame. It looks like it's trying to crawl. And it actually looks not bad, honestly, surprisingly, since it's in such a small pot. I think it's Mame. It's so hard to tell the Majestic and the Mame apart when they're small. This honestly might be Majestic. This might be Majestic. Just the way the variegation is looking on it looks kind of Majestic-y. Hmm, it's hard to tell though. This is Philodendron Majestic. That leaf right there. And then it has a new growth point right here. Very cute. This one looks pretty healthy too still, despite being dry. Another Monstera subpanata. <laughs> this one, they were all doing this thing where they were kind of crisping on the edges. So you can see that I had cut the crispy edges off on this one one time already. And now they're just crisped again. We do have a new growth point though, so that's nice. And then I had put cuttings of my Hoya Matilde in there and it's already grown so much. Look at this. It's like a full little pot. That's so cute. I love Hoya Matilde so much. How pretty is that? Little baby leaves coming in. So cute. That looks really, really good. Honestly, I might keep this. I was thinking about maybe trading it away or giving it away, but I just kind of want to hoard all of my Hoya Matildes. And then last but not least for inside the bin, we have one more Monstera subpanata. This one's definitely grown. Oh, was there two plants in here? Okay, I was like, this one's grown the most. Like there's two new leaves, but there's actually two cuttings potted up in here. So each one of them has a new leaf. 
Oh, this one has two new leaves actually. Oh, that's why it looks so crazy. Okay, so these both got squished up against the lid of the bin before I took it off. So that's why they're looking like that. Hopefully they'll unfurl now that the lid's off. And then there's another new leaf down here, which is still furled up. It's so cute. I'm really hoping that I can nurse my Monstera subpanatas back to health and pot them up together into a larger pot with a moss pole eventually, because this is such a cool and unique Monstera. You don't see it that much, honestly, but they're just, they grow really vigorously and they're really gorgeous. So hopefully mine pull through. I really need to start giving them some better attention. They are definitely plants that I have neglected a lot. Okay, so these are all of the bin plants in the sink. So I'm just going to give them a nice thorough drink. Try to wash off some of the leaves too. I have an idea of where I might put some of these plants, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work out yet. I have to do, it's just a lot of trial and error trying to figure out where I'm putting plants in here and what setups I'm having in different rooms and whatnot. Um, so we'll see if that's gonna work out, but I'm just gonna let them dry here for a while and we will address the other plants that were neglected in the bedroom. Okay, this one, my Peperomia Parallel. What the heck is going on here? The trellis has completely come out and it's just been laying like that. And I've just let it lay like that for like days. Um, so I really need to sort this poor thing out because I love this plant so much. So let's stick this trellis back in. It's still mostly attached to it, I think. I literally think we just have to stick it back in the soil. The poor baby. Don't even ask me why I didn't do this when I first saw it. I just, you know when you see things and you're like, oh yeah, I've got to do that, but then you just don't do it right away. That's like the story of my life. And the main reason that my plants get neglected. <laughs> because I end up forgetting. Okay, perfect. I think I'm, do I need another? Yeah, I think I might need another dragonfly clip. I'm gonna go grab one so we can kind of fix her up a little bit better. Okay, so I might undo this one, kind of start over, cause I think, I think it's kind of fallen down a little bit. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. Let's give her a drink. I just wanted to mention that I'm not fertilizing any of these plants because since they're so dry, their roots are way too delicate for fertilizer right now. So I'm just using straight up plain water. And then the next time I go to water, once they're a little bit more rehydrated, then I can continue with fertilizing them. Now the next two are the bigger ones. We have Miss Raven Zizi right here, who's actually pushing out a new stalk somehow. I don't know how she's growing when she hasn't been watered in weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, I know she's a Zizi plant, but still, that's crazy. 
I don't know how my single stock one has not grown in literally four years, I believe. I think I got it in 2019. Oh my gosh. And it's literally one stock. Anyways, we have this one and then the Gloriosum. And I think that I'm going to take both of them to the shower because I really want to give them a hose down and wash the leaves off and everything because they are pretty dusty. And we need to optimize photosynthesis, especially if they're going to be in the bedroom where it's not super, super bright. So that's how I'm going to water these guys. Okay, those are just gonna dry in there for a little bit. But I was gonna say, if you have propagated Philodendron Gloriosum and found success, please leave a comment down below and let me know what method you used because it's one that I find tricky. I've tried to propagate it twice now and I have not had any success. So let me know, let me know what I should do. Should I, I'm kind of leaning towards doing wet sticks. I don't know, sometimes I feel like propagating plants via wet stick, like without any leaves works better but yeah i'm just i'm not sure leave me a comment leave me your suggestions please help the sun is peeking in just a little bit there and it's so lovely so what i'm thinking for in here this just whole wall is a bit of a hot mess still so i want to sort some of that out so i'm thinking of moving that shelf over to this wall here and I also am going to be hanging just my round mirror up there as well. I feel like that's going to be a really great spot for it. That mirror that's currently sitting right there. It'll be really nice to have it on the wall. Um, so what I'm thinking is, you know, organizing this shelf a little bit more and then possibly putting some of the smaller plants on it and just using like a little clamp grow light. It's kind of bright there. I mean, it's not super bright, but it does get some light, just like ambient lighting, I guess. So for the plants to really thrive, they'll need a grow light. But that's kind of my plan right now to move that bookshelf so i'm gonna try that out and see if i like how it's looking and then we can kind of set that shelf up with some plants and organize the books a little bit and everything i also have this cute little metal green it's like a really pretty sage green table that i don't quite know what i'm gonna do with yet i'm probably gonna end up using it as a plant stand i got this from ikea it was on sale for 14.99 so i grabbed it like what a steal i feel like it's gonna look really cute somewhere but i'm gonna move it for now um not too sure what i'm gonna do with it but i have a feeling we're gonna end up putting plants on it Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put things on the shelf now. I think I'm gonna do a mixture of books and plants. I'm just going to, I think mostly put just these kind of rehab plants from the bin. So 
They don't look amazing. They're not really in cute pots or anything, but I think that this whole situation is just kind of gonna be a temporary setup anyways. It's better than having them just like on the ground in front of the window, you know? So yeah, I'm excited to get them on here. I think it's going to turn out cute and be functional for the time being. So on the very bottom shelf, I'm just gonna leave that as books. That's just my partner's books, they're not mine. So I'm just going to work with these two shelves and then we'll move up and do the top and make that hopefully a little bit, um, a little bit more aesthetic once I'm done doing these shelves. But for this middle one, I think I'm just going to do all plants. Hopefully these subpanadas bounce back quickly and then I can just take them down and pot them all up together anyways. This dubia, it needs to be repotted really badly and it needs a plank, but I'm just gonna kind of put it there for now. And then I was thinking of actually putting my coffin terrarium on this shelf because I don't really have a great spot for this right now. And I just think it'll look kind of fun here. And also there's gonna be a grow light on this shelf so it'll be able to get enough light. I really need to go through this because the plants are getting really overgrown. The ficus is already, at the top so I need to get in here and do some propagating and just kind of sort it out a little bit but for now I think I'm gonna put it on this shelf maybe move that maybe like right here I think I'll put this move this up here That should be good for now. And then I am going to put books up on this shelf, probably about half books because I don't have a ton that I wanna put on here right now. And I have a lot of nonfiction that needs to go on this shelf and I just don't like the, the look or the vibes of nonfiction. I don't know why I'm weird about that. I love the way that my fiction books look, but when it comes to nonfiction, I just don't really like that. So my solution for that is to have the spines facing in and it'll just look like pages. And I've seen a lot of people do that before and I think that it looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I do have some fiction that I'm gonna be putting on here and I'll keep those ones facing out. Yeah, just a lot of random books that I like, but I don't necessarily like the look of on my bookshelf. I don't know. There is one genre of nonfiction that I do really like the look of, and that is plant books. So I, of course, want to have these ones displayed. I'm gonna keep the spine out on this one because I have to, of course. This is one of my favorite thrillers. It was so good. In case you're looking for a random thriller recommendation. Okay, I'm just gonna put the rest of the plants back on here. Maybe my Matilde can go there. Bella. Okay, I do have some plant books that I thought I would just put on the top here like this. I think that that's cute. And then I collect vintage plant books as well because I just love the look of them. So I think I'm just gonna kind of display this one here and then I'm gonna put a plant in front of it there. And I was thinking it would look really nice to have a trailing plant on here. And I also thought that this pink pot that we moved would really suit this shelf. And I thought of the perfect plant to go in it. My Marble Queen Pothos, Greta. So look how cute she looks in here. I love this so much. So I'm just gonna pop her here. She does look really cute hanging down there already, but 
I'm considering making her vines go around the mirror just by using some little command hooks. I think that that could look really cool. And then she'll continue to grow and put more vines out anyway, so I could have some like draping and then some going around the mirror. I just feel like that could look really cute and planty. So I might grab some command hooks and go ahead with that, do a little bit of experimentation. I might hate it, but I have a feeling it's gonna look good. So we shall see. I'm gonna be using just these little tiny command hooks. I love these. I use these for so many things. Whenever I put up any lights in my house or anything like that, I always just use these little guys. Putting the command hook and then tying a little piece of string. This is actually from the Brooklyn Inn bedding. I'm using this little piece and putting it around the vine and then looping it around the um, command hook. I know that you can buy little like twisty hooks like this that are meant for this for to hold plant vines but I don't have those and I have these things so I'm using these things and I also don't know if they're like command hooks where they remove cleanly and they're not supposed to take the paint off or whatever. I don't know if they if they are like that or not, um, but I have seen those before and they look very handy. Okay, I think that I like it. I think that I like it. And then as it keeps growing, I'll just add another command hook over here and kind of continue wrapping it around. But I think that I really like the way that that looks. It looks very cute, very planty. Now I just need to put the grow light back on. This is just my clamp grow light from Amazon that I was using for my Wally Grow planters in the winter time, it actually works really well, surprisingly well. I think maybe sometimes I'll keep this arm up here so the plants on the top can get a little bit of extra light, but right now I'm just gonna point them all down. And then this vine trailing down here is gonna help hide the cord too, which is really nice. I think that I'm actually gonna take a cutting of this potho soon and start growing one up a pole because I've been seeing a lot of people doing that recently and it's so cool to see them get so big. Y'all know that I love this potho so much. This is Greta and she was my first house plant, so very sentimental to me and it would be really cool to see her get really big leaves again. Okay, I plug that in down there. Now let's turn her on. Wow. That's perfect. That is perfect. You can adjust the temperature of the light as well. This is like a daylight. And then a warmer. This one's super warm. This is kind of like vibey, this one. I'm gonna leave it on that for now. Or maybe I'll do daylight for now. And then at night, I could switch it to the warm one if I wanted to, if I'm like hanging out in here. Anyways, I think that that looks so good. Like for a temporary little setup with the clamp lamp, I think that this turned out really cute. Let me know what y'all think. I especially love the mirror. Like that looks so fun. I can't wait to see her grow some more and I can wrap her around even more and everything. I love this pot so much too. I'm glad that I found a spot for it in the bedroom. This vibe over here really suits the black pot, but over here, the vibes are pink pot and the coffin terrarium hanging out there, look at that. So cute. It's funny because we were actually gonna get rid of this bookshelf because we didn't really think we had a use for it, but now I feel like I've totally turned it into something that's cute and functional, so I'm super happy about that. A cute little book in here, love it. That is another project down, and even though I just did a couple of things in this room, I feel like it looks so much better already, so yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. I need to figure out the rest of the bedroom, of course, but 
that will come with time, I think. Okay, I think I am gonna use this little green metal table for the Gloriosum, and I'll probably just put the ZZ Raven like right there. This side of the um, glass doesn't open, the other side does, so it's fine to put things in front of here and it'll just look a little bit cuter with the little green table. So let's give that a go. Again, another temporary little thing because like I said, I'm gonna be chopping this up soon, so it can live there for now until I decide to chop it up. Actually, it looks pretty cute on that table, honestly. I kind of like it. I wish it was healthy though, poor thing. Okay, I'm gonna go get the ZZ Raven. I think I'm just gonna pop this one beside it. Cute, that looks so much better than it did before. So, so much better than the plastic bin and everything just kind of shoved there. Those will definitely be happy there for now, so I'm glad about that. Okay, I think I'm gonna end the video here. I do have some more watering and things to do this evening, but I'll probably just do that off camera and fly through it, get it all done. I have some other things to do tonight as well. I hope you like this video. If you wanna see more videos of me just kind of putting things together in the house and, you know, doing up different planty setups, leave me a comment down below and like this video so that I know. Once again, thank you so much to Brooke Linen for sponsoring this video. I'm so, so happy with my new bed set. If you want to get 20% off of their website for their summer sale, make sure you check the link out down below in the description box. Maybe the emoji of the day should be a bed. Is there a bed emoji? I'm pretty sure there is. Leave a bed emoji down below or with your comment if you watch to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.